Let there be light. Huh? What a great song. Right? Meredith, that was beautiful. All right. In the world, but not of the world. You guys have heard that before? So we've been talking, um, the services beforehand have been a lot on relationships, um, harmony, human to human type of thing. So we're going to kind of keep going on that track. Um, but I want to um, kind of address this first. So in the world, but not of the world, it is a concept that has been said over and over again and handed down to us many times. And we all kind of probably have a preconceived notion of what that means and maybe Right, wrong, different. There's no correct answer, right? Everybody's going to internalize it differently. Um, today, we're going to try to look at it and just look at it kind of metaphysically and um, see where, where it takes us. So, um, in the world but not of the world, as I was doing this, kind of trying to get ready, it's a very simple um, statement with a somewhat seemingly contradictory thing and complex back end of it, right? So if you really deep, deep dive and try to explain the stuff, it can get a little um, weedy, right? We can get into the weeds a lot, especially metaphysically, because there's always another level, right? So we'll go through this and hopefully it makes sense and everybody's clear and we're all happy, right? <laughs> At the end of the day, as long as we let there be some light, we'll be okay, right? Yeah. All right, so, Jesus the Christ, Jesus' walk on this earth is littered with um, examples of being in the world but not of the world. I could literally read scripture for 30 minutes and story after story after story after story after story show you how Jesus stood forth and was the, the um, all-star, the leader of this concept. Living in the world and not being of the world, right? So we have those. Um, Jesus physically was born onto earth as a human being. So that's the first step right there, right? Physical. We're in the world. Um, Jesus, every time, not every time, a lot of times Jesus healed somebody. That divine spark, that not of the world div divinity would go through and heal somebody. And he would give them directive to go participate somehow with the world. Hey, go tell your f family you've been healed. Pick up your bed and carry it. Um, go wash your face. Go wash your feet. Go do something, right? Or go, don't tell anybody. You know, that's all still participatory actions in the world. And then there's multiple accounts of Jesus being tested and tempted, right? There's accounts in the Aquarian of Jesus in Heliopolis you can make this school and it, your, your teachings and your divinity and your, your um, uh, lessons can be this great thing that people will come and want to learn from you. And you can, like, the, the test was where you're at now is good enough to make this worldly school where people can come. And Jesus said, it's not mine to do. It's fun. It might be awesome. It's going to pump my ego up a little bit, but it's not mine to do. Um, in before Jesus is, um, goes through the um, death, burial, resurrection. Before that happens, he is tempted, you know, and he is um, going through these worldly beliefs of doubt and fear. And like there's um, passages in there where he goes, God, can I do this? You know what I'm saying? But he still goes forward. So let's hands up. Round of applause to Jesus of Christ because everything, everything that is in this, in the Bible, in Jesus' teachings is a pure example of being able to do this. So we can start there as a baseline. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus can do all of this. We are all the things he can do, we can do, right? We are trying to get there. So we have the power to do this too. So today we're going to try to look at what we can do in order to accomplish some of this, um, this concept of being in the world and not of the world. So, and one thing Jesus did, which is really powerful, and I'll leave it here with Jesus. Um, Jesus actually, you think about this logically, right? Jesus was born in the world. When Jesus died, his body was um, messed up. He experienced the pain. He had to, he chose to experience the pain. He could have 
disappeared. He could have turned off his senses, just been like, do what you need to do, I'm out of here. So he chose to experience pain. He was died, his body was resurrected, and then his body ascended. His body was included in one of the most amazing acts of divinity, and he still chose to include his body because the world is important. Because his path, his mission was to include the world with the divine. So there's value to both, and we'll explore. So, in the world. Be in the world. What does that mean? We're here physically, right? We're in it. But to be in the world means to participate, for me. Participate in the world. We're in the world. We can stand here, and we can stand on this one spot for the rest of our lives and not say anything and not do anything. It's not going to last very long. But the part, the be in the world is participation. Be present. If we were meant to be alone, we would sprout from the ground. And we would live one lifetime after the other. And there would be a line, a line in heaven waiting for their turn to go down the roller coaster, right? <laughs> we're not meant to be alone. We're not meant to be singular human beings. We're meant to come together. Because if we were alone, our ability to grow into harmony would be pretty limited. We would be alone in here. We wouldn't have to find resonance with other belief systems. We wouldn't be challenged to learn how to love people. We wouldn't be challenged to learn how to forget. We wouldn't be challenged to create synergy between a group of people. Correct? So we're here. We're together. We are multiple people on the same world at the same time. So be in the world. Participate in the world. That's the simple in the world, right? We're here. You in or you out? You heard that one before? <laughs> Are you in or you out? So we're in it. You didn't choose to be out yet, so you're here. Of the world. So the of the world is the more, um, the trickier definition. For me, it was personally trying to do this. Of the world. So we know for today, let's do this. We know the earth is the world, right? We know we can and need to continue to strive to take care of the planet we live on, correct? Yeah. So we're going to leave that, our interactions with the earth. We're gonna, today we're going to talk about the world as the thoughts, beliefs, opinions, judgments, and fears of others mm -hmm. around us. So when I say thoughts, beliefs, opinions, judgments, and fears, the tendency is to cast a negative light on those. They aren't. Standard, kind of a standard Christian theology belief that we've inherited is the world is bad. The world is sin. The world is immorality. The world is these things. Jesus did not say that. Jesus brought divinity to the world so that we can find harmony with the world and God. Not to cleanse the sinner. Not to cleanse the behavior of people. Right? It's to raise people so they can look each other eye to eye and find harmony. And raise the whole group up. That was always his thing. It, other people have said the other stuff. Right? So, um, the, if we have that thought of the world being bad, and this was kind of a cool thing. If we have that thought, and I think, I know when I hear in the world, not of the world, I still even have a tinge of that, of the world, <clears throat> bad. That, just that, of the world is bad. I have that. So I know some of us are carrying it around. And I know a lot of people of us are carrying it around outside this room. So, and then in our daily lives, we still have that tendency to judge people based off of their actions and their beliefs and their um, ideas. We still have that, even as I know I, know I do. I know every single one of y'all do in this, in this room. Because it is deep-seated in us to act that way, right? So we're trying to change that. Here's, a, here's the thing that'll help, hopefully. It helps me. Of the world is other 
people's thoughts, beliefs, ideas, opinions, judgments, fears. All, we can wrap all those up. That's of the world. Guess what? I am the world to Holly. Right? Mm -hmm. Everybody else, I am the world to them. The world cannot be evil. The world is thoughts, beliefs, patterns, judgments of others. So if that is the case, I'm the world to a lot of people, everybody else on this planet. So can I judge the world as bad and not judge myself? You see? So when we can put the mirror in front of us and stand up and be accountable to we're in it together, because if, if we don't believe that, that we're the world to other people and that we have thoughts and beliefs and ideas that may affect and pressure and affect other people, how can we expect the same from ours? So stick that mirror up, stick your hand in there and say, I'm a part of the world. <laughs> and you are the world to somebody else. So just, let's go ahead and just delete that idea that the world is bad and the world is immoral and the world is evil. All right? Unless you're going to stand up and say, I'm bad, immoral, and evil. Then that's a self-judgment that's just going to hold you back for a long time. Okay? I thought that was pretty cool. The mirror is always fun. <laughs> the mirror is fun, and then the acting on the mirror is the hard part. <laughs> so, um, how to do this? We've, we're you guys clear on the in the world and of the world type of thing? How do we do this? How do we um, participate in the world, but we're not a product of our world? The first thing is we, you have to let the divine drive. You have to let your inner light, your inner Christ drive as much as possible. And I know on Sundays it's easy for us to stand up here and say, always allow your Christ to drive. Always make the higher choice. Always do this. We are so inundated on such a base level of our thoughts and our patterns that it's, it is tough. And we're going to need mulligans every once in a while. <laughs> Especially on the small stuff and the routine stuff, the re rep repetitive stuff. Work is a big example. We get in a pattern at work and we have thoughts about other people at work and we don't even realize how mm, maybe not harmonious they are. <laughs> because we're trying to accomplish something kicking everybody out of the way, right? <laughs> you didn't give me what I wanted. Get out of here. So let's... I, we'll give ourselves some mulligans. We always got to forgive because we are children working. We are children growing. Your homework's not going to be perfect the first time you do it. All right, so how do we do it? Allow Christ to lead. So example from here, and uh, Cindy used this a couple weeks ago, I think. Um, and it's such a cool story because it is so... Um, it's almost anti what we're taught on a base level, but on a spiritual level, it's so powerful. So the story of Ruth and Asher and Jesus. So you guys know the story. We talked about it a couple weeks ago. Ruth's married to Asher. Ruth loves Jesus, follows Jesus. Asher does not, does not believe, says, what are you doing? You're crazy, right? So Ruth gets all mad, leaves, says, I'm leaving him. He's, he's not with me. He's, you know, blah, blah, blah. She probably turned him, out, turned him into like a much worse guy than he really was. Because she was mad at him. <laughs> Which we all do. And Jesus says, Ruth, you're awesome. You love the Christ. I love you. You are awesome. You're a part of my team. I'm totally cool with you. But that love you have for me and that does not need to be a division between you and your husband. You go back home, and he tells her not to speak of the Christ. And then, don't speak of the Christ. Be the Christ. So she listens to the Christ, goes back home, and what does Asher do? He turns around and becomes a follower of Jesus shortly thereafter. And they're happy. And it, it's not a story of, um, God, missionary work. It's not a story of, what's the word I'm looking for? Converting him, yes. It's not a story of conversion, good over evil. It's a story of her listening to the Christ, 
allowing herself to do what she is guided to do and believe her beliefs in the world of her home, which the other guy doesn't necessarily believe that. And what is found at the end? Harmony. Harmony is found at the end because the Christ is driving. Harmony will, the Christ driving will lead to harmony. It may be a weird journey. <laughs> It'll lead there. You guys, you guys can probably tell countless stories where you did what you were supposed to do, what your inner Christ, what your happiness was called for you to do in the storms around, and you came out the other end sparkling. I know every single one of you have the That's the Ruth story. All right, another story of that from one, one of mine. So I've worked with this uh, company a long time ago. It was a remodeling company, and I, I didn't know anybody. It wasn't a who-you-know type of thing. I just cold-called people and found the company that needed some, some help. So I go in, and I'm working, and it was, it was a good job for me. I needed, the, I needed the job, and I was guided to work with this company and guided to show up. And it was right for, my, for me to do. The big thing with this job was my direct boss, who was like two, three years younger than me, was not nice. Not nice at all. So there was many, many, many days when I first started this job, where I'd be on the phone just blah, 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 blah. He does this, he does this. Like, I don't understand. I'm, I might quit. I might fight the guy. Like, and I was young. Very, like, this is a long time ago. It was a long time ago. But it was to that point where physicality was getting close. Like, it was, re it was really bad. But I... I had to stay the path of my toil, right? I had to stay the path of where I was going because I didn't know where I was going, but I knew I was supposed to be where I was at. And this guy was not me and was not mine. The job was mine to do. He was just along for the job that I was doing, right? So the... Um, I keep working with the guys and everything, and I have worked with that guy. He's my friend now. <laughs> I have worked with him off and on, not for the past five years, but probably for the ten years before that, off and on many times. I worked in his company. I was his number two for like two years. He taught me so many skills carpentry skills that are above and beyond where I was at when I started and we're friends and he came to my wedding and we totally have that type of connection where I can talk not talk to him for three years turn around call the phone and nothing changes right so that I think is a prime example of letting the Christ drive I'm supposed to be at this job I'm supposed to express my ability to create value in the world at this place, this guy's here. Instead of letting this guy drive, I drove and he came along for the ride. And now we are in a harmonious situation, right? So, and, I, and I'll tell you, the value of that guy is, looking back on it, you know, before I started doing this, I'd be like, yeah, 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 we're friends. Looking back on it, the value I got from that guy is a lot. It's a lot. It's like, uh, I've made a lot of money off of what he's taught me. Um, I have a friend I can pick up the phone. And he, working with him in the, the few ventures we did after, made me grow up quicker and made me have responsibilities that I may not have had from a more established type of enterprise. So therefore, I'm prepared to take on the next step. It was a big, big thing for me. So um, let the Christ drive. So another way we need to do it, we need to change our identities. And I've, I'll say this a lot. I said this a two weeks ago. I feel like I say this almost every time I get up here. But it, it runs through everything. We need to change our identity. Our identity is, needs to be the child of God. And it, I say it like it's easy, right? But the world is others' thoughts, beliefs, judgments, and ideas. Therefore, the world is race consciousness. Therefore, every little group has its own consciousness. Your family you were born into is the world. It is ideas and thoughts, beliefs that are from the outer, that have not come divinely from you. So we are inherently raised by the world for, for a while. 
So we need to be um, aware of that, that there's value, there's love, there's compassion, but there's also fear, protection. There's all kinds of things we pick up from the world at a very young age that we routinely don't pay attention to as we live our life. And it becomes those things that are hard with, uh, within us. Most of our issues that are hard within us are ideas and thoughts that we got from someone else. They aren't our divinity or they wouldn't be hard. We wouldn't have those, okay? So the identity of yourself changed from, if you can change your identity from son of blank and blank, daughter of blank and blank, or son of America, or resident of Georgia, Milton, or son of whatever. If we can change our identity from the tagline of those groups, because that's all they are, they're groups of spiritual beings participating together, collectively sharing thoughts. If we can take that identity and change it to child of God. Now, again, we're giving mulligans left and right here. This is a, it's a tough switch. It takes discipline. It takes meditation every day. It takes really, 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 really trying all the time on your thoughts. So we're going to have some combo, but if we can baseline and know baseline at the end of the day, I'm a child of God before I'm a resident of Georgia, before I'm an American citizen, before I am a University of Florida Gator football fan, <laughs> right? You guys laugh. Here's an example. You ever been watching a game? You ever been watching a game with your group of fans? And something happens, and you're in your divinity, and you're in your Christ, and you must be just having a good day. And they, the guy throws a pick six, and you guys lose by three points, and you go, man, he'll learn something good from this. <laughs> and, he, and you know, this is going to be a lesson, and I bet next week he's not going to throw any interceptions because he's going to learn that coverage, and we're going to grow exponentially from this. When you're in that state watching the football game, everybody you're with, what do they want you to do? I, I, I've done it before. They want you to get mad with them. Yes, exactly. Get mad with me. What? He just did this. Blah, blah, blah. He just cut him. He, it's, we're talking about a 20-year-old kid. We're grown men trying to cut him and jump, take his scholarship away from him. But the group you're with says, get mad with me. But your identity in that moment is not just a Georgia fan. Your identity is a child of God. And we get lucky. This happens every once in a while. 90% of the time, Georgia fan takes over. Right? <laughs> But 10% of the time, that child of God takes over, and we can move away from that. And we don't have to join them in the get mad with me. Right. And we don't have to lose our son Saturday, Sunday all day because the team lost. Monday <laughs> morning till about lunch, you're kind of dragging. We don't have to take care of that with us. And it's funny, and it's a small example, but it is a microcosm of the world that we live in. Get mad with me. Do this with me. I need people to do stuff with me that I believe the same. Instead of do what's right for you and don't judge other people for what they need to do. That's how you live in the world but not of the world. Yes, if I could draw God's he healing energy right now and heal everything that ails you, I would do it. I haven't made it that far yet. <laughs> I'm still being asked to focus on how I participate in the world without judging and needing to be and think like everybody else. If we get that, and this is great timing. I mean, there's the world at large is very um, interesting right now. Yes. That mindset, if we could ch change that, it would be very powerful. Very powerful. So, how do we do this in action? I'll give you three tools. So Jesus, before he died before he was crucified, buried, resurrected, and ascended, I should say, because it was more than death. Before that happened, Jesus set out, and this is throughout the, the Bible and throughout the Aquarian, these things are, are set up, given to the disciples, but we're just going to go with the, the three basic pillars, right? Jesus said the pillars of my church going forward need to be love, faith, and wisdom. Love, faith, and wisdom. Jesus thought of these three attributes very highly. 
Jesus lived his life in the world, but not of the world. Jesus said, love, faith, and wisdom will lead the way. Love, faith, and wisdom are the way you can live in this world, but not of the world. If you love, you have compassion, you don't judge, and you can love yourself. So you have compassion for others and you're not going to judge people. And you can love yourself. If you can't love yourself, it's really hard to let the Christ lead. If you can't love yourself, it's really hard to find identity of child of God. Because if you can't love yourself, you're going to find identity in the world. Sad group. Mad group. You know what I'm saying? So, love. Faith. Faith gives you the ability to act independently in a crowd. Faith gives you the ability to act independently in a crowd. Faith gives you the ability to make a decision based off of your inner guidance and execute that decision while everybody's standing around you telling you how it's not going to work or how you should be afraid of the outcome or I did that before. Good luck. <laughs> now, how, how often is our life, our outer world, like that to us? Even good, well-intended citizens of our world. Even parents, grandparents, the people we love do it to us. And it's not evil, and it's not bad, and it's not this bat mob trying to stone us to death. It's just the way the world has, race consciousness has been, yes, we've been trained to do this. And we're trying to break the pattern. So don't judge them for it. Just say, say, I have the faith to continue along this path that I need to continue along no matter what you say. And I hope you're there at the end. If you're not, then so be it. Apparently, we don't, it doesn't need to be that way. You don't need to be there at the end for me. Right? And then the last one, my favorite is wisdom. So I think wisdom is a fun concept. Um, that I, I, I believe there's 1,000% a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Mm -hmm. Knowledge already knows the end. Knowledge is based on history. Knowledge is rules, laws, outcomes are solidified, right? Two plus two is always four to knowledge. I did this, therefore you can't, is knowledge. If you build on this lot, it's not going to work out, is knowledge. Wisdom allows, wisdom takes knowledge, wisdom needs knowledge. But wisdom is higher. Wisdom allows for different outcomes. Knowledge knows the end. Wisdom knows the value of the journey with not the need to know the end. Wisdom knows, all right, I see what you're doing, young Padawan. I, wherever you end up, I know you're going to have value on the way. I know you're going to learn what you need to learn. I don't know what it's going to look like. Knowledge is, don't do that, I've done it before. I failed, you're going to fail. So those three things, love, faith, wisdom. If we can train ourselves, train our thoughts, train our ability to be present in the world, to always be able to reach back to one, a half a one, all three of them. If we can always center ourselves in those, love, faith, and wisdom, we can find our identity in, as a child of God, and we can let the Christ drive when the world is all around us. That song is cool. A lot of the words are worldly words. It is, it is the distress of that person, the, the, the distress of the world, but the ultimate message is let the light shine. Find love, find faith. Be wise, be a child of God, and do what you need to do. And when people judge you, say, I don't care. I'm not going to judge you back. You're doing what you need to do, and I know I'm the world to you. So the least I can do is not judge you for being on your path. Right? Pretty good? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right.
Let's uh, center in. We'll anchor it down. So you put your feet on the floor. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. God, we ask that your light shine down on this group. And individually, I want you guys to imagine a column of light, whatever color you need. Come down from God and envelop your whole body, starting with your head and your shoulders, your chair, your feet, all the way to the ground. And just sit in it for a second and breathe the safety and love that that column gives you. This column is your connection with God. It is the way to find love, faith, and wisdom. So we ask God to charge that column and we ask our body to open and receive the nutrients of that column. So I want you to consciously invite your body, your physical form, to participate with the divine and soak it up. Breathe it in. Drink it. Do a physical action. Include your body. in that column. I want you to look to your heart. And I want you to find the log in your heart. Whatever you need to visualize or think about or feel to find the love in your heart, find some. And we're gonna ask this column, this nutrients, this God, this divinity to fill that love we have in our heart so it can expand. Expand our love, God. We know we can always love greater, no matter where we're at. Allow the energy to flow into that love and expand it. And then we're going to allow this column to feed our faith. Allow this column to feed your faith, to give you the strength to act independently, to follow your guidance no matter what's saying. Expand your faith. We can always use more. And then we're gonna allow this column to feed our wisdom. Find your wisdom. And we ask that this column feed our wisdom and that our wisdom expands. Feel it growing bigger, lighter. And we ask that our need to be right be disconnected and our ability to value the journey be expanded. The correct way is your way. It's not mine. And we ask that God charge all three of these attributes that we have. Love, faith, and wisdom. God, we stand forth as your children in this world ready to participate and find harmony with the world around us without fear without judgment with love in our hearts 
Thank you, God. Allow the column to disconnect. Feel your body back in, hopefully very expanded, very light. Thank you again, God, for this ability to instantly connect whenever we need. Expand and charge the tools that allow us to be harmonious. So it is. So, for one day at least, let that column feed you. Go be harmonious this afternoon. <laughs> Thank you for your time. And I'm right there with you, trying. Have a good one. Thanks, guys.